My name is Ed Frawley. My wife and I own Learbird.com. We've been producing dog training videos for over 40 years. I'm about to release a new online course titled Dealing with Dominant and Aggressive Dogs. A little background on this, I produced a DVD back in 2008 of the same title. This is not an update, this course is not an update to that DVD. I chose to keep the same name, but there's a ton more information in this online course. There's over 200 short videos in the online course. It's a detailed, detailed course. Now, before I talk a little bit about my experience, and I think that's an important thing for anybody that's thinking about getting information on aggression problems on their dog, before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about how I got the fire in my belly to do that DVD, to do this online course, and I was going to write a book on dominant aggressive dogs, but that's a different subject for another time. I went to my first seminar on production dog training back in 1994. I produced my first dog training video in 1982. In 1998, I was asked by the Attorney General for the state of Kansas to come down to Kansas and testify as an expert witness in a murder case. It involved this woman, Sabina Davidson, who had four Rottweilers that got out of her backyard and killed a nine-year-old boy waiting for a school bus. Well, the boy's younger brother had climbed up a tree and watched this all happen. I agreed to do it and didn't charge and didn't want any money for it. This woman, this was a really bad deal, and it's even hard to talk about it today, because this woman kept these aggressive Rottweilers that ran as a pack in her backyard in a four-foot fence with a latch on the fence, one of those little V-type latches where it goes over, you pick it up. Those dogs knew how to open that gate when they wanted. They were getting out all the time and terrorizing the neighborhood. Their territory was the whole neighborhood. And they had chased people into their homes. It was a bad, bad deal. And I have to say that when I went down there, the district attorney said, you're probably going to spend 10, 15 minutes on the stand. I ended up spending two and a half hours on the stand. And we were lucky because the team, the prosecution team that went after this woman did a good job. She was found guilty. She had to spend seven years in prison and then she was deported back to Germany. In my opinion, she should have spent a lot more years in prison. There was no excuse. This was not an accidental one-time deal. These dogs had been causing serious, serious problems a number of times. They were so bad that when the responding officer pulled up to the scene and he got out of his car and the male Rottweiler charged him like a lion and he had to shoot that dog as it was charging him and he killed it, the Rottweiler slid to his feet. That's how dangerous those dogs were. So my only point in saying this is that's why I've spent a lot of time over the years. I mean, 1998, so we're talking almost 25 years ago I did that. And I've continued to keep information on dog aggression. If I were going to buy a course on dog aggression, I would know, I would want to know a little bit about the background and the experience of the guy that was teaching me. So as I go into this video a little more, I'm gonna talk about my experience, not because I'm trying to blow my horn, but because I think it's important that you understand that I know what I'm talking about here. And that's why I'm just gonna take a couple minutes here and talk about my experience over the last, I don't know, over 60 years, I'm 75 years old now, and the only thing I've ever done in my life, really, is deal with training dogs. I mean, we, I started Learbird in 1982, but I went to my first serious 
seminar on dog aggression and, and bite work back in 1974, where I went to a seminar in St. Louis on Schutzen. Schutzen today is called IGP. It's a biting dog sport. I got hooked. I mean, really hooked. And I don't know how many seminars I went to over the years. Many, 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 many more than I can count. In 1978, I went to my first seminar in training police service dogs. I got hooked on that, too. I produced my first dog training obedience video in 1982 and never really looked back. But going on, in the 1980s, I went through a number of years where I would import selection-tested young males for police service work. I would go to Germany, I would bring them back, I would sell them to either uh, law enforcement departments, police departments, or vendors who trained those dogs that would then go in and sell them to police departments. And I did that for three, three or four years until I got, until I got tired of how difficult it was. <laughs> it was a lot of work. For 10 years, during the 1990s, I was a canine handler on our local sheriff's department. Three of those years, I was chairman of the training committee for the Police Dog Association for the state of Wisconsin. I enjoyed that work, I really did. Over all of those years, for 35 years, I bred German Shepherds from German working bloodlines. And I knew those bloodlines from the years experience I had in going over and testing dogs for police service work. So for 35 years, I bred German Shepherds for police work and some litters of Malinois. All of my dogs that I bred came from German working lines. So, in 2005, I thought I'd write a book. And I started to collect emails that I got through Learberg.com for a year on dog aggression and dominance. And by the end of the year, I had a stack of emails this tall. And I still get that many, we still get that many every year. But I kept all those emails back from 2005. And I'm gonna use a lot of them in this course because those dogs are long gone and dead. You know, that's, that is 15, 17, 18 years ago. And many of the videos that you're gonna see me talk about in this course came from back in 2005. But don't kid yourself that we don't get the exact same problem, same scenario emails today that we got back then. So that's kind of where the motivation came to do the course. Now I want to talk about something to make it clear, because I'm not going to paint a pie in the sky about having some magic bullet to fix all these dogs that have all this dog aggression. I'm not going to do that. I wrote an article, and I have to give my wife credit. Cindy gave me the title for the article, titled, Some Dogs Will Never Forgive You and you can't change them. I thought about that for a long time because it is so true. And it all goes back to the point where some dogs have been so poorly treated. Some dogs have been mismanaged so badly and allowed to demonstrate bad behavior for so long that the road to correcting them is beyond the skill level of a lot of people. That doesn't mean that those people have to wash every one of those dogs out, take it to the vet and have it euthanized. It does mean that to fix a lot of dogs isn't gonna happen in a week or two. To fix a lot of dogs, it's gonna take weeks, months, maybe even years, and maybe never. The thing that you will get, I hope, from this course is to recognize that in a dog you have problems with. And then you're going to get enough information here and enough ideas here to learn how to properly manage dogs that do have aggression problems. It's, it's a fact. You have to have the patience and the mental mindset to be willing to do what's necessary to fix the problems that your dog has. And if you don't, if you want, a, if you want something that you think you're going to fix in a week or so, forget it. Don't buy this course because you're not going to be happy with it. 
And I will also say this, and that is, I didn't go out and create scenarios where I would bring a dog in that has resource guarding or I would bring a dog in that has territorial aggression and set it up just as a demonstration for this course. Number one, that would be unfair to the dog, and I'm not going to do that. We aren't going to do that. could also be very dangerous for the people that are doing it. People that want to see bad dog training, people that want to see examples of dog aggression can go on YouTube. People that think that they want to learn how to do this on the cheap can go and look at a lot of these guys that put these YouTube videos up on how to fix your aggression, your aggressive dog in five minutes or with five steps. I'm sorry. That's not what I'm about. That is not what we are about here. Here's an example of, of where we're coming from. During the 1970s, 1980s, I was a yank and crank trainer. That's a, a trainer that uses avoidance and corrections. The old William Kohler method of dog training. Did it work? Yeah. Did it screw up a lot of dogs? Yeah, really a lot. I feel bad for all the really nice dogs that I had back during that time period, how I screwed them up and then turned around and eventually they forgave me. Doesn't happen all the time. A lot of dogs, depending upon how you live with them, how you've treated them, they won't forgive you. Here's an example that people may relate to by talking about people not forgiving their boss versus a dog not forgiving his owner. Imagine yourself now. You work for this guy. He's kind of a hard guy to work for, and he's kind of strict. You come to work one day, and he's mad at you because of something you did. So he grabs you and he throws you on the ground and he jumps on you and he alpha rolls you, holds you down until you say, oh, oh, okay, okay, I won't do that again. Well, isn't that the same thing that alpha rolling is with a dog? And we've had guys on TV that have TV shows that tell you how to do that. When a dog gets in the red zone, alpha rolling, that's dumb. I know of a woman, and I won't say her name or where she even lives, not a large woman, that had a German Shepherd that was a strong, tough German Shepherd that was a little dominant. She tried to alpha roll him. She got down on top of him, and he put 90 stitches in her face. Okay? So, be very careful about who you get your information from on how to deal with these type of dogs. I will say this, though. And we learned a lot from this dog. Back in uh, the early 2000s, Cindy and I took in a dog that was a retired eight-year-old uh, police service dog. Had a very successful career, bit a lot of bad guys, but he had been mistreated. He had some really bad training done on him, unfair training. He ended up becoming very handler aggressive, bit his handler a few times, not very, <laughs> pretty badly. We chose to take this dog in because we knew the dog, we knew the dog's bloodline. When he came to our kennel, we put him in a kennel, and he learned that the only way he was coming out of that kennel was if he would accept us putting a muzzle on. And he had to wear a muzzle for well over a year until he learned that we were always fair with him, that we did not abuse him, that we didn't use strong, aversive methods for reasons that he didn't understand, or maybe reasons that he disagreed with. In the end, we could take this dog's muzzle off over a period of time. Now, this took over a year for this to happen, maybe a year and a half, for him to accept us and to trust us, because he knew we weren't going to do anything bad to him. We could brush him, we could cut his nails, we could put him on a leash, walk him anywhere. He didn't let light up on people. We could take him in our office. We didn't let the girls in the office come up and hug him and do all that stuff. But we could take him in the office and he didn't show any aggression to him. They ignored him like we asked him to do. That's fine. But here's the interesting thing. I had an adult son back there. And when he would come to my kennel with his buddies and they'd been drinking and doing stupid, acting stupid, that would flip a switch in this dog's brain and he would revert back to Cujo. So my point here is that you might control your dog, but you're always going to have to be 
cognizant of where that dog came from, what some of the switches are for that dog, and how you're going to safely manage that dog. Because whenever my son came to the kennel, even after that, I put the dog away. He never had a relationship with that dog. I would never allow that to happen. So at the end, there's some questions. There's a couple questions you have to ask yourself before you buy this course. That is, do you have or do you want to learn the skill level and do you have the temperament to be willing to make the changes to manage the dog that you have in front of you? If I have to believe that most people that come and listen to this thing <laughs> and read the description want to learn how to fix their dog. We can help there to a limit, but you're gonna learn a lot on what you might have to do. Then you have to answer the question, do you have the willingness and the patience it's gonna take to solve your dog's problem or to solve the management problems that you're gonna to have to do to live with that dog? So you have to be prepared. Do you have the temperament to take the time it's going to take to fix your dog and not expect it to get done overnight. And in closing, I'm going to say that there's probably over 200 videos in this course. The majority of these videos are lecture videos, detailed, lectured, short videos, where I talk about some of these 2005 emails, explain what I think was wrong, even though the dog's not sitting in front of me, and my recommendations on what we would do to start to correct that problem.